Hello everyone. Welcome to Chennai Tech Square. In our previous video, I have explained you the basic Ansible configuration which was used to connect the AWS environment to perform our automation tasks. In this video, we are going to talk about the various attributes we must set in the Ansible configuration file and its sources. Ansible supports several sources to configure the ansible.cfg file. Changes can be made and used in a configuration file which will be searched for in the following order. The highest priority is the system environmental variable followed with the Ansible configuration file under current working directory. And the next search order would be a hidden file under users home directory. And the very last search order is the default Ansible configuration file which is etc ansible ansible.cfg. Prior to Ansible version 1.5, the order was ansible.cfg file under the current working directory followed with ansible underscore config which is the environmental variable and the next search order was ansible.cfg in the user's home directory and the last search order was etc ansible ansible.cfg. Ansible will process any one of the file found first and rest are ignored. For example, if we have a hidden configuration file under our home directory, then it overrides the default configuration, which is etc ansible ansible.cfg. Similarly, if we have the environmental variable set, it takes the precedence of all. For example, if I set export Ansible underscore config equals slash temp ansible dot cfg. If you have this environmental variable set, then slash tmp slash ansible dot cfg file takes precedence of all rest of the three files. In my system, I have the configuration file under my home directory, which is dot ansible dot cfg in this case this this file overrides the default file which is slash etc ansible slash ansible dot cfg and my ansible dot cfg file i have two sections one is the default section the other one is the privilege underscore escalation section in the default section we should set the inventory file this is the default location of the inventory file that Ansible will use to determine the target hosts which are available to talk and execute the playbooks. And the next parameter in the default section is remote underscore user which is used to connect to the target server using a nurse test user account. And next attribute is folks. By default, Ansible uses only five simultaneous connections to execute playbooks on the target host. If you have thousands of servers in our environment, then the value should be increased in the folks attribute to 10 or 25 as per our need, provided we have sufficient resources like CPU memory available in the Ansible control node and we should have good network bandwidth as well. The next attribute is sudo underscore user. This is the default user used to sudo to the remote host. If sudo underscore user is not specified here, then the default is the most logical route. Next one is the module underscore name is the default module which is used to execute ad hoc commands. Next is the privilege underscore escalation section. Here we have become become underscore method become underscore user and become underscore ask underscore pass attributes first let's talk about become it is to activate the privilege escalation methods such as sudo or power broker the default behavior is no so we should ensure that this has been changed to true next one is become underscore method which is used to set the privilege escalation method actually the default is sudo 
Other options are sudo pb which is power broker and pf execute do as and ksu. And become underscore user is the user who gets the privilege access to run commands on the target host. The default is root. The last attribute is the become underscore ask underscore pass. If it's set to true, then when we execute the Ansible playbook, it asks for the password for the become underscore user account and the target host. In our setup, we have two hosts. First is the NSCTL01, which is our Ansible control node, and ANS WRKR node, which is our managed node. It's nothing but our target host where our all playbooks gets executed. For testing purpose, let's execute an adder command and see if it gets the expected output from the target host. The sample adder command is ansible all iphone m command iphone a app time. When we use all, it executes the adder command in all hosts mentioned in the inventory file. iphone m is the module and iphone a is the module attribute. If you see, ansible is connected to the target host using command module and executed the uptime attribute. Let's see the sample inventory file which I have created in my system. If you see, I'm grouping the systems as dev and prod. If you need to patch our dev service alone, we need to mention dev in the Ansible playbook as the host parameter value. Let's see using ada command how to test this feature. In the Ansible ADA command, instead of all, instead of all, let's pass dev so that it executes the ADA command only on all hosts under dev group. If you see, Ansible control node is able to connect to ANSWRKR node and gets the uptime of that server. But we get an error message for ANSWRKR node 02. It's because I don't have this server in my system in my environment. Similarly, if I pass Ansible all, Ansible will try to execute the uptiming uptime command in all the hosts mentioned under the host file which is under dev section and it will, next it will try to execute the command on the prod section. I hope you have all understand the various important attributes that we need to configure in the ansible.cfg file and how to group our servers in the inventory file. That's all for this video. Stay tuned to watch more such videos and subscribe to our channel and continue learning. Thank you.